frightening situation for Utahns traveling I-15 through Juab County. You might remember last November, drivers reported somebody randomly shooting at them. One woman grazed by a bullet that ripped through her car. Prosecutors say Adam Gein was the man pulling the trigger. That arrest came months after the shooting and only after law enforcement used a type of warrant the KSL investigators have been looking into. As Daniela Rivera reports, critics argue these warrants invade your privacy even if you haven't committed a crime but were simply nearby when it happened. In the case against Adam Gein, drivers didn't know who shot at them, meaning law enforcement had very little to go on. So they used what's known as a reverse location search warrant or a geofence warrant. These warrants allow police to draw a digital fence around an area, then ask a company like Google to give them data from all the cell phones that were there around the time of the crime. You're going to almost inherently have people whose information is being swept up who are not involved in the crime. Leslie Corbley is a privacy policy analyst with the Libertas Institute in Utah. These warrants really do sound like a fishing expedition. They, they most certainly are. They're, they're general warrants that seek caches of data on the front end that you then sift through to find a suspect. Libertas calls geofence warrants an unconstitutional abuse of technology. Here's their reasoning. The Fourth Amendment says warrants must be based on probable cause and particularly describe the place to be searched and persons or things to be seized. By nature, they say most geofence warrants are lacking in particularity. That's the point. Police use them when they don't know who they're looking for like in the case of a freeway shooter. This investigator testified they went through the data of those who traveled through the area, then asked Google to give them more information about four specific people. That led them to Gein, but they're still holding on to the data from three others. So the other three are, are three. currently under investigation. There are checks all along the way. Deputy Utah County Attorney Brian McBride says it's important for people to understand the cache of data law enforcement First receives is anonymous. Once they pick out relevant data, they can go back with another warrant and ask the company to unmask certain users. The government has the duty to protect us and from crime and from overreach. He points to a guilty verdict secured earlier this year against a man who kidnapped and killed a teenage couple in 2017. Prosecutors claimed data gathered using a geofence warrant and presented to the jury helped rule out the possibility of another killer at the crime scene. Without it, there certainly will be crimes that are not solved. McBride says he's only seen these warrants used in the most serious of cases. But research by Libertas suggests during the last several years, police use of digital dragnets throughout Utah has increased. The KSL investigators reviewed several geofence warrants issued in Utah, most for investigating violent crimes like kidnapping, aggravated robbery, and murder. But these warrants filed by Layton police sought dumps of location data for lower level crimes like car burglaries. For example, they got this warrant to prove to track down someone who stole a credit card, then used it to buy gas and tacos. Because it isn't a defined area of law, it's sort of the wild, wild west. Republican Representative Ryan Wilcox chairs the legislature's Law Enforcement and Criminal Justice Committee. Over the summer, members signaling they intend to propose some sort of limits on reverse digital search warrants. What we're talking about defining here is the details about what is appropriate to ask for. As Utah lawmakers look to define what's acceptable here, challenges to these searches are mounting in other states. Earlier this year, a federal judge in Virginia ruled police violated the rights of innocent people people by sweeping up their data for a robbery investigation. And a pending bill in New York seeks to ban geofence warrants altogether. It would be the first of its kind. Our main goal of preserving our rights under the Fourth Amendment, so in being able to, to say with a straight face to our citizens of the state of Utah that yes, those rights are being protected. Geofence warrants seek location data, but privacy experts say that's really just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to what police can get with a reverse digital warrant. Another example they gave, reverse keyword search warrants. They say these could land you in front of investigators solely based on your internet searches. Mike?